Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses, legal and professional fees. Get ready and some coffee because we're looking to get the tax man off our back with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the Schedule C itself also basically an income statement, having business income minus business expenses, which could be called business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, rolling from the Schedule C into line one income of the formula, the formula outlining the calculation for the Form 1040, of which we see the first page here, Schedule C, ultimately rolling into line eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one where the schedule c rolls into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having an income statement type format that being income minus expenses we're down here on the expenses area looking now at legal and professional fees. So legal and professional fee, such as fees charged by accountants that are ordinary and necessary expenses directly related to operating your business are deductible on Schedule C. So this is generally th kind of a straightforward item, meaning those legal and professional fees that are ordinary and necessary expenses, those that we had to consume in order to help us generate revenue, you would think would be deductible. Some of the complexities with them would be one, just the bookkeeping of it. When you think about the bookkeeping side of things, where are they placing the legal and professional? They might have one line item called legal and professional, they might be breaking out, say, accounting expenses and uh, lawyer expenses, for example. Another complication with this one could be things like lawyer expenses or legal expenses, let's say, where we want to make sure that we're breaking out the legal expenses that are related to the business as opposed to personal expenses. Obviously, if we paid a lawyer for something that is not business related, then you would think it would not be deductible as a business expense. Whereas if we paid the lawyer to deal with some kind of lawsuit that we had against the business, you would think it would be a deductible business expense. Also, with the accounting fees, uh, we might have accounting fees again for both personal 
and professional. In part, we might have some accounting fees that we deal with to do the tax preparation, the tax preparation being the Form 1040 and the part of the 1040 that's related to the business, the Schedule C. So in, in that case, you would think that the part of the fee that's related to the Schedule C, the business, might be deductible, whereas the fee for the rest of the return uh, may not be deductible. And so you'd have to use some kind of ratio calculation, you would think possibly in that case to come out with a reasonable breakout between the deductible part and the non-deductible part. But if you're doing tax preparation, of course, that's something that we can basically consider as part of, of the fee calculation, what part of the fee should be going to business and therefore possibly deductible on the Schedule C, what part of the fee would be going towards the personal, therefore not deductible on the Schedule C. Okay, however, you usually cannot deduct legal fees you pay to acquire business assets. So add them to the basis of the property. So this is another kind of wrinkle in the system, meaning uh, if we had legal expenses in the purchase of a property, which often could happen, like if I purchase real estate, for example, but possibly with large pieces of equipment, we might need the legal expenses to help us with just the purchasing process, which you would think if you paid legal expenses, you would just expense them at the point in time you paid them. But if you had to pay them in order to get the property, then they're basically part of the property to, to purchase it and put it in place and therefore should be capitalized along with the cost of the property and the expense being allocated over the useful life of the property. So if the fees include payments for work of a personal nature, such as making a will, you can take, uh, you can take a business deduction only for the part of the fee related to your business. So once again, now we're talking about a will uh, situation. So you would think that that would be main, uh, largely personal, but possibly could have a business component related to it. You can only take the part as a business expense, which is related, of course, to the business. All right, so here we have the good old tax preparation fee. So if you're a tax preparer, you will be intimately uh, knowledgeable about the fee possibly. And then the question would be, uh, should you be deducting the fee on the Schedule C <laughs> or uh, should it be or, or what part of it? So you can deduct on Schedule C the cost of preparing that part of your tax return relating to your business as a sole proprietor or statutory employee. You can also deduct on Schedule C the amount you pay or incur in resolving uh, asserted tax uh, deficiencies for your business as a sole proprietor or statutory employee. So then you get into the practical matter of, well, how do you do that? How do you allocate part of the fee to the return versus somewhere else? If you're doing the tax preparation, then of course you can look at your fee structure and you might be charging like by form or something like that, uh, in which case you can use some logical method to have a breakout between the business portion and the rest of it.